Welcome, this is part one of a mini-series on how to play jazz guitar, walking bass lines, and chords at the same time. This is super fun and really advanced sounding and might take a little getting used to, but it's really not that hard once you have a framework to work with and once you have a way to kind of work up to doing it. So that's what we're gonna do in this lesson. We're gonna break it down step by step, every little thing to do to get that sound of walking bass lines on the guitar with adding chords in at the same time. For this first lesson in this short mini-series, we're gonna learn how to play guitar walking bass lines any time you have two beats per chord and we're just going to create kind of some parameters around how to do that to make it very straightforward anywhere that you have two beats per chord in a chord progression. Since this is part of a little series, I'll have a link in the description where you can go to a playlist of all the videos in this series uh, as they come out once they are published. So the structure of this lesson, we're gonna talk about going through the circle of fourths with dominant seventh chords and creating bass lines with that. And then we're gonna talk about three different ways that we can add chords to a bass line, specific rhythmic places to put uh, little chord punches into. Then I'm gonna talk about variations of the bass line, how we can add Add more connecting notes and lastly we'll talk about applying it to real changes and how to uh, maybe use this even if this is all we have just two beats per chord how it's gonna sound amazing in real music right away once you start using it <laughs> Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of topics, a lot of jazz guitar, a lot of music theory, a lot of mapping out the fretboard, um, so we can have more creative control over music, more freedom to express ourselves the way we want to, no matter what the genre is. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. So the first thing we're gonna do is something a theory teacher of mine called the Slithering Sevens, because it's a resolution of dominant seventh chord. I'm gonna start on G7 here which is going to be fifth, fifth string, fourth string, third string, fret 10, 9, 10. So it's G7 shell voicing. If you don't know what shell voicings are, check out my shell voicings video. I'll put a link to that in the description. But um, that's G7 without the five in it. And the that flat seven is on the top, and it's going to resolve down a half step to the third of the next shell voicing dominant seventh chord that we're going to play, which is C7. And we're going to go through the circle of fourths. So every chord is technically up a fourth from the last chord, even though we're going down, descending down a fifth to, to get to him sometimes. So we got G7, C7, F7, B flat seven. Same shapes every time. Same shape off the fifth string, different shape off the sixth string, but just repeating. And we're doing that pattern. So circle of fourths. I'm using a hybrid picking technique right now. My last video was on how to work on hybrid picking. So if you're interested, check that out, but you don't have to do that. You can use your thumb and fingers. Okay, so let's work on that slithering sevens. Okay, so now we're gonna add a tritone substitution shell voicing a half step above every single chord. So you're just gonna play the exact same shape and going half step, um, half step above and then resolving into the chord that we're going to. So instead of um, go straight to F7, we're gonna play that F sharp seven shape or just right above and then down. Tritone substitution. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. You're just adding the same shape a half step above every chord that we just did. The reason it's called tritone substitution is because this G7 and then that uh, tritone away, that chord that's a tritone away, um, not only is it a tritone away, the root, a tritone means three whole steps or three whole tones, whole step, whole step, whole step, so tritone. Um, it's not only a whole step away, the root, but they share the same tritone within the chord. This is a tritone interval in G. That same exact tritone interval is in C sharp seven. Um, so don't sweat about uh, any more about that, but I just thought it'd be fun to say. So we're gonna go, okay, G7, tritone sub, C7, tritone sub, F7, etc. Already kind of sounds like a walking chords kind of thing, not just a walking bass line, but a walking chords kind of thing. Okay, so now I just want us to play only the roots of all of those chords. That is our first bass line that we're gonna work with. So first we added the chords just to show how harmonically that all kind of makes sense with chordal harmony, but now we just want that bass line and now we're going to um, add in chords and there's three different ways that we're gonna add in what I call chord punches. The first one is just a sustained chord on the one of the beat or on the beat that the chord changes. 
uh, two. So every one and three of each measure. So you're gonna just play the bass note and the chord at the same time, and then play that connecting kind of tritone sub uh, root, and then each chord, you're just landing on a, sus a sustaining as much as you can until you have to move. Uh, so it's not like a short sound necessarily. That's our first option for what I call adding in a chord punch. The next thing is something I call the, the, the up punch, and this is a short punch. Okay, so right after you play the root, you're gonna play a short, kind of muted. You mute it right away with the left hand um, on the end of the beat. Super fun sounding. Right, really sounds like two things going on. I mean, it is two things going on, but they have such different sounds. That bass line is connecting and kind of legato. I love that kind of staccato uh, chord punch in there. So now we have two different types of ways to add chords in. And next, I want you to do the double punch. And these are just terms I made up. But they're not they're not like official uh, terms. But I just you know over time you use you explain things a certain way, and it's kind of fun to have your own uh, terminology sometimes, or it's just what makes sense, right? Um, so this is the double punch where you play the the on the beat and uh, then the up beat right after. So it's a combination of the two. Okay, so. So with each of these, I want you to exclusively go through the uh, circle of fourths pattern that we worked out, finding all those chord shapes. Exclusively use those chord shapes and do all the sustain on the on the chord change, do all up punches and then do all double punches uh, just to get used to those. And then the fourth thing to do is to try to combine them. With all the combinations, there's a lot of variety there, and it's really fun to try to just intuitively feel it out as you get used to um, each option for how to add chords in. Um, it, it really feels like there's room to be expressive with it. So keeping certain parameters really strict at first, and then just letting loose on on a one thing is a great way to start feeling like you can um, do things on the fly. So we're being super strict about exactly what the left hand is doing as far as these chord shapes and where the bass line is. And then you're working on, can I combine those three different types of, of chord punches? Um, and up until that fourth way to do it where we combine them, we're, it's just an exercise kind of etude where you really have to play it in a very specific way. So the next thing we want to do is create variation with the bass line. So right now we're just approaching every chord from a half step above. Sounds great. It's always going to sound great. And that's why I did the tritone sub thing because for any chord ever, you can do that with your bass line because it's kind of creating this harmonic uh, uh, feeling, this this sense where it's almost like you're, you have this tritone substitution chord a half step above before you go to it. You can do that any time to any chord, even if the scale it comes from or whatever you don't think of as having that note that's a half step above. So, um, and really you can approach any root from anywhere and kind of go by ear, right? You can go from a uh, half step below, which is what we're gonna do next. Um, and other places. So we're just gonna do a variety of these things. So the next thing I want you to do is exclusively um, play your bass line with uh, the half step below approach. Okay, so we just did the same thing. I did a mixture of two different types of chord punches, but don't worry about that. You can just do one at a time, or if you're comfortable doing a combination, that's fine. But we're doing the um, every chord, everything's the same, and the bass line is strictly half step below. So now we're just gonna do other ways to approach the root. We're gonna do a whole step above, which works great from this chord. That might not always work if your chord um, has a flat five in it, if it's a half diminished chord, for example. Um, that going a whole step ab above to the next chord, um, it's not a chord tone of a half diminished chord. So in some instances, some of these are kind of specific to the chord type, but in this exercise, we do wanna get used to it in general. And most chords, will, well, that will be a good choice. So we're gonna go whole step above chord, whole step above chord. So we just wanna get really used to all those options. Physically, that's a little different every time. It sounds a little different every time. Now 
we're going to add a connecting note from the whole step to the half step to the to the note that we're going to so we're kind of doing a combination we're doing eighth notes now whole step above then passing tone and then to the root of the next chord Notice I'm doing just the up punch every time. That's You can do any way you want on that. You can even just practice the bass line itself. We just want to feel like that is an option. Okay, now we're going to try to combine them. So we're just going to do whatever punch you want. You can decide that ahead of time or do a variation, but we're specifically working on doing a variety of the options of the bass note approaching. So here we go. So just with what we mapped out so far, there is tons of variety that we can use between the combination of the three chord punches and then just what we talked about with the um, bass line approaches, like, wow, there's, with this exercise going through circle of fourths from G7 to B7 mm -hmm. over here, there's no way you could do all the variations even. I mean, there's so many different things you can do in the moment with these slight different ways to approach each chord. Another thing you can do is approach um, from a whole step below or do connecting notes. Do, do, do. Depending on the chord that you're coming from, um, that can be kind of better sounding or worse sounding, and you can just go with your gut on that and go with your ears on that. So I think that alone is just a lot, like we can really have fun with that and really take our time. Um, make sure you're really thinking about the feel, the those kind of the staccato feel, the, the connectedness of the bass, how much we sustain sustain as much as we can on on the the chord punch that's on the beat um work on the feel you know really let it feel relaxed and and let it feel um how in a way that feels authentic to you and take your time with it so i think that that can just be really fun to do that for a while but once you get used to that um start to apply it to progressions that are just two beats per chord a great progression to do so what i did in the intro of the video is a uh, c major seven and just basically one six two five in any key but c major seven uh, a minor seven d minor seven g seven So uh, pretty cool and a lot of variety. Like uh, I was thinking probably too much, right? I want to get it down to not have to be thinking, but I was like, okay, how can I, because I'm demonstrating it, right? I'm like, can I approach the next chord in a different way, in a different way? Um, in reality, uh, even just a couple options, a couple ways of switching it up sounds great. Um, even con consistently approaching a chord with the same kind of, um, with the same approach note sounds quite musical and quite good so you got to just go with your own kind of artistic expression in the end of course so let's say you want to apply this to a minor two five one and you have a whole bar of d minor seven and then two beats of e half diminished and two beats of a seven now we're not going to do walking on the d minor seven because we haven't talked about what to do if you have a whole bar yet a whole measure we're going to do that in the next video we're going to talk about single chord vamps what if you just have four measures, eight measures of the same chord. What do you do? Two measures of the same chord. How do you do a walking bass line during that? That's the next video in the series here. So we're just gonna play D minor seven and then a little bit of walking between those. Right, so I did approach the next chord um, even out, even during the measure of D minor seven, but that makes sense according to what we've studied so far. So with what you have now, it's you can use this in the context of real music. Just whenever you do have two beats per chord, you can do a walking bass line there. And even if you haven't studied how to do it yet with vamping on one chord for a while or how to do kind of full song progressions, which we're gonna do in the next couple of videos, um, it just is gonna sound awesome. So if I do like a B flat blues and then just do the turnaround has two beats per chord in a jazz blues. So this is B flat seven, E flat seven, and then B flat seven, C minor seven, F seven, and then So 
just a quick example of like, okay, even just for the turnaround, it creates this kind of fun momentum and then you can go back to just comping more sparsely or whatever way that you want it to do it. Um, it depends on the stylistically how you're playing, right? Even if you're just doing this kind of thing or like more of a rock and roll or songwriting kind of blues, um, you can use this same kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever style um, you're interested in. If you like the sound of this stuff and you want to work on it more and find more places to, to work on it and you don't know what chord shape to use at any given time for any chord type that might come up, definitely download my free booklet that is called Any Jazz Chord. It's a method um, that I've been teaching for a long time and I put super clearly into this booklet for how to play literally any jazz chord with as few as eight chord shapes. And it's taking advantage of this shell voicings thing we're doing here. So um, it's super useful if you don't know how to play some version of literally any jazz chord, then definitely download that. It will be very useful, totally free. There's a link in the description to get it. So question for you, was there a part of this lesson that filled in a particular gap that you were looking for? Was it the idea of the chord punches and the variety of those, the different ways and how um, much texture that can create in our playing by just having a few ways to add chords with bass lines? Maybe it was just the idea of how to construct a bass line period, or maybe you knew about this stuff and you just needed a kind of step-by-step -step way to work on it. Let me know what was kind of the most helpful for you in this lesson. Um, that really helps me out so I can help you out. And if you genuinely like this lesson on jazz guitar, walking bass lines, then please hit that like button. That also really helps the channel out. And it definitely helps other guitarists who want to learn similar things to you, helps them find the stuff they want to learn so they can keep progressing and enjoying music. And thank you so much for all the wonderful comments. I'm really doing this to help you out in the comments. Help me know that I'm on the right track with that. So I wanted to feature a quick comment, JBGW Elaine, uh, Special thanks to them on my uh, video about jazz guitar chord extensions, how to add extensions to the shell voicings thing that you're going to learn about if you grab my free PDF. Uh, on that video, they commented and said, I've been playing for over 40 years and jazz for at least 25, and this is the best explanation on chord construction I've ever seen. Bravo. Well, that really means a lot. Just wanted to feature that comment. If you're interested in learning about jazz guitar extensions, you can check out that exact video that they're talking about. I'll put a link to that in the description. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week's lesson is going to continue this jazz guitar walking bass lines mini series. And like I said already, we're going to talk about how to play walking bass lines and chords when we just have a single chord in a chord progression, a single chord vamp. What do you do in so what if you want to play on that tune and do a walking bass line and there's 16 bars in a row of the exact same chord? That's next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much. Take care and happy practicing.